Okay, Calgary C, Unit 2, Day 6, Other Forms of Indeterminate uh, Forms, Indeterminate Limits, um, and Opportunities to Use Locatile's Rule. So, these are the only ones that we can use Locatile's Rule on. Um, Mr. Statham like to call them the motherships. Um, but we're going to encounter some others uh, that are indeterminate but can't be used with L'Hopital's rule unless we manipulate them. So like infinity times zero. You might be like, oh, well, that must, that must equal zero. No, not necessarily. Uh, infinity minus infinity. Doesn't that equal zero? No, not necessarily. Okay, how about one to the infinity? Doesn't that just equal one? Not necessarily. Well, what about zero to the zero? Is that... Zero? Because zero to any power would be zero? Well, not necessarily. Infinity to the zero. Does that just equal one? Because anything zero powers one? Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to look at these. We're going to figure out how to deal with them. And they're not going to consistently give us the same answer. So we're going to get different kinds of answers. So it's re they're really going to fall into a, a handful of kind of situations that will have similar strategies to use on okay so this one right here if we say okay well this is going to be infinity times sine of zero is zero right so this is the first indeterminate form we'll be taking a look at and figure out how to prove what the value is okay so on the homework and your next test i want you to show the initial indeterminate form. Okay, so on homework, test, initial indeterminate form. So here's the tip. We want to change it to one of these. All of these we want to somehow get to one of these. So we want to somehow change this to a fraction. So we want to change the multiplication uh, into a fraction. And hopefully when we do that, we get zero over zero or infinity over infinity. In fact, you can do it multiple ways and one way will lead to one and one to another. So how do we change multiplication into division? Well, division is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So we could say, well, it's this divided by one over X or it's this divided by one over this. My recommendation is pick the one that's pretty ugly to leave on top because putting it as division by a fraction of it it's gonna be crazy because remember we're gonna be taking derivatives of this next and then we could put the x down here as one rec so isn't this the same thing as that and now when we plug infinity in we get zero over zero which is an indeterminate form we're allowed to use uh L'Hopital's rule on so now we're going to go ahead and say, okay, well, the limit as x goes to infinity of the derivative of sine, it's going to be cosine. Um, then we've got to multiply by the derivative inside. That's x to the negative 1, so it's going to be negative x to the negative 2, and negative 1 over x squared. And the derivative of the bottom, that's that's the same thing as x to the negative 1. So in my head, I'm, I'm kind of thinking of it this way. So, okay, well, the derivative of that power will be negative 1x to the negative 2 which is negative one over x squared. And then kind of the hope is part of these will clean up. And then we do the limit as x goes to infinity of the simplified result. And cosine of zero is one. So infinity times zero ended up being one this time. Now there is an alternative approach or an alternative way of of kind of dealing with this using substitution, which I've shown you guys briefly before. You could rewrite this as the limit as h goes to zero. And this is just a way of rewriting this of sine of h over h. And it just looks a little like cleaner. You're doing, you know, it's the same thing, um, but it, it, you know, does look a little nicer. 
and you still get the same answer now. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's really worth that, at least in these situations, to mess around with that. I mean, I felt comfortable with that, but anyways. So I showed this on a homework assignment, I think a couple assignments ago, where we could change, or the notes, where we could change from one type of limit to another instead of going to infinity, going to zero if you rewrite it using a new variable. Okay, so that's generally, if you get multiplication of infinity times zero, zero times infinity, try and change to a fraction. Now I'll let you know, if we'd put the sign one over x on the bottom instead, we would have got infinity over infinity, which works, but the driv that would be much messier. Okay, this one right here, initial one over natural log one is zero, so that's one over zero is infinity, right? Minus one over one minus one is zero, infinity. So this is our initial indeterminate form, okay? So if we get like infinity minus infinity, the tip, my advice is to usually these infinities come from fractions. And if there's two of them, they're probably from two separate fractions. So the, the strategy is to combine them into a single fraction. Let's start with that. Okay, let's see what happens. So we take a limit. It's x is 1. Least common denominator this is going to be x minus 1. This is natural log of x. Least common denominator is going to be uh, x minus 1 times natural log of x. Okay, now if we plug one in this, we get one minus one is zero, minus natural log of one is zero, is zero on the top. Uh, one minus one is zero, times zero is zero on the bottom. Okay, now we're allowed to do uh, L'Hopital's rule. So we're going to take the limit as x goes to one, the derivative of the top is going to be one minus one over x. The of the bottom is going to be, now we've got to do a product rule here. So it's going to be um, x minus 1 times derivative of natural log of x, 1 over x plus natural log of x times derivative of the first stuff, which is just going to be 1. Now, um, if we plug 1 in, we're going to get 0 over 0. So we might do it again. Um, the other option is to maybe clean up the complex fraction before going on. I think it would still give you 0 over 0. So uh, I'll show that in a second. I'm just going to keep going with this. So sometimes on these problems, you sometimes have to make some calls of like, well, if I rewrite this, simplify it, reduce it, um, you might get something that is ready to go, or at least is easier for the next step. So if, um, if we take a derivative of this, it's going to be, this is a uh, negative x to negative one. So power rule is gonna be negative one, reduce the power by one, get x to negative two. It's gonna be one over x squared positive. Here, if you distribute this, that's gonna be one, derivative that's zero. And then you have a negative one over x, so that's gonna be one over x squared. <laughs> and this is gonna be one over x. Now, if I plug one in, I get one over one plus one is one half. So infinity minus infinity was not zero, it was one half. Um, infinity minus infinity might be zero. It might go to infinity though. These aren't necessarily the same size infinities. Now, by the way, here, if I'd multiplied the top and bottom by X, I mean, maybe this makes it easier. I don't know, it'd be X minus one over x minus 1 plus x natural log of x. If you plug 1 into this, you get 0 over 0. And if you did L'Hopital's rule with this, is it easier than the other one? Uh, I don't know. It's going to be 1 over 1. You have to do a product rule here, though. So that's one, that's one uh, you know, price you're paying. Okay, now that's going to be 1. Plug x equals 1 in. That's going to be 0. So you're going to get the 1 over 2. You know, that's, that's a possible way of attacking it. 
But in general, if you get infinity minus infinity, you're probably coming from second fra separate fractions, combine them into a single fraction, re-evaluate the limit, see if you get that one of those indeterminate forms that you allowed to use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, now this one is going to be 1 to the infinity. That's the initial indeterminate form. And you might think, oh, no, that's clear. That's just 1. Um, you might be surprised. Now, here's the problem. We want to get this as infinity over infinity over 0 over 0. And clearly right now we have something stuck in the exponent. And we don't want an exponent at all. So usually how do we deal with exponents? How do we get rid of exponents? How do we get things that are in the exponent out of an exponent? We take the log or natural log of both sides. I'm going to say, let's go with natural log. Okay, so that's going to be our strategy. Now, it's actually a little complicated because what we're going to do, because we got to do it to two sides. You can't just introduce a natural log. We can change fractions into multiplication, multiplication, fractions, combine fractions together. That's fine. But taking natural log that wasn't there requires you to do to both sides of an equation or expression, which we don't really, we only have one side. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this up. We're going to say, okay, well, let's define the thing that's inside there as a function. And let's take the natural log of both sides. And then that allows you to bring that out in front. Okay. Let's take the limit as x goes to infinity of this new natural log of the function. So this isn't actually the limit you were being asked to take originally. So, but let's see how this works. We use log rules to move that out in front. Okay, now if we plug infinity in here, we're gonna get infinity times natural log of one is zero. So hey, this is, uh, this is what we got up at the top. So what do we do with this? Oh, now we're gonna use a strategy from the first one. We're gonna change, try and change this to a fraction. So we wanna get this as, we wanna move one of these to the denominator. Leave the ugly one on top, unless you really like making life really painful for yourself. Move this one down there as one over x. If you multiply this, you should get what we started, right? Now, if you plug infinity in here, you get 0 over 0. If you did it the other way, you get infinity over infinity, which would work, but the derivatives would be a lot worse. So now, we're going to go ahead and do L'Hopital's rule. I'm going to start right now here because I feel like I might run out of room. I'm going to take a derivative of the top, which is potentially a little messy. You've got to multiply by the derivative of what's inside. It's going to be negative 1 over x squared, right? Because that's x and negative 1. All divided by negative 1 over x squared. Those are going to reduce. Okay, we're going to plug, we could plug infinity in right now, and we would get uh, 1 over 1, which is 1. Now be careful, this is not your final answer. This is the limit of this new thing we came up with. That's close to what we want, but not what we want. The other possibility that you could have done here after this is you could have cleaned this up and rewrote it as multiply the top and bottom by by x and you get that and but then you get infinity over infinity you take L'Hopital's rule again and you get one now I kind of liked the way I did it first it seemed like a little less work but just stone ideas out there but sometimes something is really bad and if you change it clean it up you get to an answer quicker sometimes it might make it worse Okay, now, um, this, is, this is not your answer yet, okay? Because this is the answer of the natural log of f of x. We want the limit of just the function. So the limit of just the function, I'm going to go back. The limit of just the function would also be the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the natural log of the function, right? I mean, properties of limits say that you could take the limits of the inside parts first. e would cancel out the natural log and give you f of x, right? This is what we found right here, right? So then that means this is going to be e to the 1. 
And the final answer is just E, the natural number E, which is kind of crazy. One to the infinity is not one, it's E. So you need to, when you use this strategy, this is going to be a, 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 a very common mistake. People are going to just tell me the answer is one and that they're done. So you got to remember to exponentiate. both sides to get your final answer. Okay. That means you got to get rid of that natural log that we introduced by introducing a new exponential to cancel it out. So that's the strategy there. If you have an exponent, you're going to take natural log to get it out and to get an answer, but then you got to get rid of that natural log afterwards. A couple more examples in the back. So this one, we're approaching zero from the positive side, which is going to be zero, and positive zero to the zero. Now this was one of the scenarios I listed at the very beginning of the notes. And we said, this is indeterminate, because it's not really zero. It's something really tiny, raised to something really tiny, okay? But this is very similar to the last problem. We have an issue with an exponent. So just like last time, Let's take natural log of both sides. So this is very much like the last one. Different indeterminate form. Similar issue though. Similar strategy. So I'm going to rewrite the function as just x to the x. We're going to take the natural log of both sides. Which is going to allow us to bring that power out in front as a coefficient. Log rules. We're going to take the limit as x approaches 0 plus of this new function. So that's going to be the limit as x approaches 0 plus of x natural log of x, which is going to be 0, positive 0, times. Now when you approach natural log of x from 0, it's going to go to negative infinity. And that's why there's a superscript plus, because natural log function looks like this. You can't just approach 0. From both sides it doesn't exist over here so you have to approach it from the right side okay but it goes to negative infinity so this is our new indeterminate form so this is what we dealt with on the first problem and last problem so then the strategy here is to change into a fraction so some of our other strategies get brought up inside these other strategies um and we're going to take the limit as x approaches zero plus now you can either move the natural log x to the bottom or the x. Leave the ugly part in the top because it's going to get uglier if you move it to the bottom. Now, if you plug this in, you're going to get negative infinity over positive infinity, which is good to know that you're going to get a negative answer. Okay, now this is something that we're allowed to use. Well, Dell's rule on. So we're going to take the limit as x approaches 0 plus. The derivative of the top, which is 1 over x, derivative of the bottom is negative 1 over x squared. We're going to clean it up, right? So we can multiply by negative x squared over 1, keep change flip. So it's going to be negative x, which is going to be 0. Now that's not your final answer. You need to remember to exponentiate. both sides, just like last problem. This is the answer to something a little different, something that we manufactured. So if we want the limit as x is 0 plus of the original function, which is the original problem you're given, we got to take the limit as x approaches 0 plus of e to the natural log of f of x. That's the thing we just found right there, right? So it's going to be e to the 0 which is going to be 1. The answer is 1. OK. Uh, last one. This is going to be infinity to the 0 power. So this is one more scenario that we listed at the beginning of the notes that we haven't seen. But very similar to the last two problems. We have an issue with exponents that we don't want to deal with. So we're going to take natural log of both sides. 
That's our strategy. Um, but we have to have two sides to take the natural log will side. So we're going to kind of set up as a new problem. I'm going to move that out in front, log rules. So then we're going to take the limit as x approaches infinity of natural log of f of x, which equals the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x natural log of x, which would give you 0 times infinity. So that, that we want to change it to a fraction. Now this one's actually really easy to change to a fraction because it's pretty much already there. Like, I mean, I'm, you might have just made it a fraction right away, right? I don't have to like flip anything. So that's going to be infinity over infinity. So we do Lotel's rule. Drive the top, drive the bottom. So if you plug infinity in that, you get zero. Remember to exponentiate both sides. Okay, so this is the answer to something a little different. If we want the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x, which is the original problem, then we need to take the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the natural log of f of x, wouldn't that work? And that's what we just found, e to the zero is one. Okay, now for the homework, I'm making some changes to these if they're still here. We're gonna go ahead, I'm trying to give you guys a break. We're not gonna do any more book work, okay? So the 2-6 homework is actually gonna be worksheet 210. So we're jumping forward to a worksheet I was gonna give you anyways. And homework 2-8 is gonna end up being worksheet 212 which I was going to give you anyway. So I'm taking off some assignments and specifically some book assignments, which I think generally will make people happy. So go ahead and try those assignments. Check your answers online and uh, see if you can get as many right as you can. Fix ones that you got wrong on your own if possible. And otherwise have some questions ready to go and I'll try and help you out.